All right, let's talk about using Omniverse with Rhino. This is for versions six and seven. And we wanna get into the basics first. Let's go into Launcher. Let's make sure you have all the right things you need to uh, get started and have the right capabilities here. So the first thing is we wanna go under Exchange and under Apps and get that cache installed. Cache is basically a way to uh, have your system be very efficient. Once you start using materials and things like that, um, it'll cache those so that you aren't constantly reloading those um, and it, it will speed up the way uh, things open up in view. Uh, wanna get view on there, so let's get that installed. So click on that, it's also under the app section. Install that, um, may take a couple minutes here. Um, sped it up here to make life a little easier, but this is your, gonna be your gateway into looking at things in Omniverse and it'll have the RTX rendering and things like that. So definitely wanna get that, have an app on your system. So now that we have that installed, uh, the next thing we wanna do is go under the connectors and we wanna get the Rhino connector. And so this is the, the main piece. This is the add-in that goes into Rhino that lets you uh, publish things out to Omniverse, gives you some control how that's done as well. Um, so we'll go through that here in a few minutes. So now that uh, Rhino is installed, it'll also put um, the connector for Grasshopper as well. They're coupled together um, so that you, if you use Grasshopper, you can also enjoy that as well, um, connecting to Omniverse. The last thing you want to do is set up collaboration. So we're, we're adding a nuclear server here. It's going to add something locally to your system and we call this local host. Um, this lets you publish out to Omniverse and this is Omniverse running. Very lightweight, um, I, like server running on your system and lets you push all that USD from Rhino there. Of course, you could set up a collaboration server out on a server on your network or out on a cloud drive as well. But here we're going to just use it locally. So now that we have all those pieces installed, you see we have the Rhino connector as well as uh, view installed. We're ready to get going here. So next let's, uh, let's bring up Rhino and take a look at that. So I'm using Rhino 7 here. Um, you'll see that we actually have a toolbar up there called Omniverse. Um, nothing too magical to this model. It's uh, just already has some materials to find. Um, otherwise, you know, just go find your Omniverse toolbar and there's a bunch of buttons here. Uh, the first one that we're gonna look at is gonna be called Send to View. And so we're gonna click on that. And when we click on that, what it's doing is it's gonna publish this model out to Omniverse, so it's already done. And we're gonna go over to view and view is gonna pop up and then we it'll open up that model automatically for you. So here you go. Here's that model in view. And you can see that it's already done some material mapping and things like that. It already has the lights brought over. Um, the rectangular lights uh, that were defined in Rhino have also been brought over. So it has uh, you know, lighting that you would expect in that model already defined to come over. Um, and we're using this in draft mode right now. Um, and let's go take a look at what the stage tree looks like. So the stage tree is essentially showing you what we've exported and how it's organized. So you'll see that all of the layers from Rhino are supported. They're all under geometry. And then you can also see the lights are there too. So the data that was defined in Rhino has been brought over into Omniverse. And now just kick, kicked over to path tracing here with preview mode. And you can see that it looks really good. All right, the next thing we're gonna do right here is um, we're gonna go through some of the other options. So the after we just did send to view, the next one we're gonna do is gonna be um, publish. And so what publish does for you is it lets you control what you wanna save and where you wanna save it. So the model we just saved out to Omniverse is gonna be under that send to view folder and you can see the Espresso machine right there. Um, and what you can do is instead of it just naming this and giving it an automatic um, kind of version on the end of it, you can actually pick where you wanna put it. So we're just gonna put it out in coffee as the project. And we have a few options here. We're gonna use material mapping and then we're also going to use the layer materials when we do that mapping. And here we are, we're just gonna go open it up just to show you that it's, it's essentially what we just did with send to view, but now we have control. So you can see coffee there, open up that top level project and same thing. So you have the same model. So, so send a view puts it into a particular location, but if you use the publish button, you can control where this goes. 
and it's going into a project, you can add many things to this project and they won't overlap. They will be uh, all separate items that you can go modify and adjust, um, turn on and off and things like that. So we just happen to have one model going out to this project. Uh, this next thing is so you can connect to your server. So if you have multiple Omniverse servers, uh, maybe your local host, maybe you have one on the network, you can select which one you want to save to. Uh, settings, this lets you, if you um, have a different view installation or a very specific one, uh, you can specify what that's going to be. By default, it's going to just pick the one that the last one installed with Launcher. Um, of course, some help. And then we have this thing called Live Sync as well. So we're going to... Um, get into that here just to show you uh, some of the things you can do with that and we're going to click it on. So now that this dialog comes up, we're not in live sync yet. You actually have to check that live sync button, but basically it tells you what USD it's going to be saving out to. So after we published, it holds on to that last model that you just saved. Um, so it's already pre-populated. Otherwise you can go find it and, and put that in there. So, now that we've turned on live sync, we're going to come back over here and we're going to uh, turn on live sync and view as well. Let's just shrink down Rhino so we can kind of see them side by side and, and see what's happening here. Okay. Let's just get all this adjusted. Okay. Now that you need to keep that live sync dialogue up in Rhino, otherwise it'll turn off. So let's just pick this coffee cup and we're just going to move it around in Rhino. And here it is moving around inside of uh, view at the same time. Let's just switch over to draft for a second because it'll, it won't flash here. There you go. And you can see that now it's just, it just moves around the scene. So you can delete things, add things, modify things, and all those changes will be pushed live. The fact that view is also says live sync just as it's listening for those changes. So it can show you those changes all at the same time. Now, when we come back into Rhino, which we'll do here in a second, um, to turn this off, you can either close the dialog or just uncheck live sync. And now the changes are no longer being pushed to Omniverse. And then if you wanted to update, go back to live sync or you could publish again. That's it in a nutshell. Hope you enjoy it.